access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, can you talk about your feelings? You'll be able to with the brand new Feelings PDF Conversation Cheat Sheet. You'll learn all the must-know emotions in your target language. Second, if you love to eat, then you'll love this. The brand new Food Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Learn to talk about food with this PDF. Download it for free right now. Third, the 50 most common nouns that all beginners should know. Do you know all of these nouns? If not, this lesson will teach you the 50 must-know nouns fast. Learn them effortlessly with the audio slideshow tool inside. Fourth, learn how to fill out forms in your target language. This one-minute lesson teaches you all of the words you'll see on administrative forms. Fifth, want the best language learning app? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll learn language fast and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to learn the language in six months with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, then get up to 45% off six month premium or premium plus with the six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi everybody, Anya here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the difference between blau machen, to make blue, and blau sein, to be blue? These are two common expressions in German and do not have any connection with the literal meaning of blue at all. Let's take a look at some examples so you can learn how to use these expressions correctly. For example, if you're just not feeling well today and need to take a rest, you can say Ich mache heute blau, meaning I'll skip it. It refers to work, school or another activity or event. Another way to use this expression is Ich bin blau, I'm drunk. You can use this at a party when you've possibly had one too many and it may signal to your friends that it's time to go home. So. Why do these expressions use the word blue? The original reason is that blue is commonly associated with negative feelings. This means that, as an idiom, the word blue often reflects unhappy emotions. Keep in mind that both expressions are colloquial and should not be used in formal situations. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you next time. You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. Kundennummer. You are checking out the hotel's facilities when you see a notice on a door. What does the notice mean? What does the notice mean?
The notice reads, do not enter. Kein Zutritt. You search online for the nearest bus service. What bus service does the page show? What bus service does the page show? The web page shows a free bus service. Kostenlose Busverbindung. Hi everybody, Anja here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common German questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some of the most common German proverbs? German has some really interesting proverbs. In this lesson, we'll go over some of them. First up is the expression, abwarten und Tee trinken. This literally means, to wait and drink tea. This is a common phrase used when you want to express your patience about something. For example, if you applied for university and you need to wait for the results, you can use this expression. Next, we have the expression Alte Liebe rostet nicht, which means old love doesn't rust. For example, imagine you haven't seen an ex for many years, then suddenly they come back into your life and the flame rekindles. In that case, one might use this expression. Next up is einen Bären aufbinden, literally meaning to untie a bear. If someone tells you a story and you don't think he or she is telling the truth, you can say, he or she's untying a bear, which actually means, I don't believe you at all. Another interesting idiom is, auf den Schlips treten, which literally means, to step on the necktie. If you offend someone, you might say, entschuldige, ich wollte dir nicht auf den Schlips treten. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your necktie. Let's go over a few more. Alles in Butter. Literally, everything is in butter. If someone asks you, are you okay? You can tell this person, ja, alles in Butter. Yes, everything is fine. The next one is auf die Pelle rücken. Literally meaning to move to the skin. The imagery is quite self-explanatory. If you imagine someone being too close to you physically, you can comment on his or her behavior by saying, Du rückst mir auf die Pelle. Literally, you bother me. Last, we have Übung macht den Meister. Literally, practice makes the master. Imagine your friend is practicing something really hard, but just isn't quite there yet. You can tell him or her, Übung macht den Meister. Practice makes perfect. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye, see you in another series.
everyone. Welcome to the monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, and discover new resources. By the way, you can download all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see right now on the website. So click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is four rules for staying motivated with language learning. You're going to learn one, the mistake people make with motivation, two, the four rules for motivation, and three, how you can apply the four rules to your language learning. Do you wish you were more motivated about language learning? You watch motivational videos, you feel good for a second, but none of it sticks. This lesson may have some tips to help you. First, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the 24-hour survival phrases cheat sheet. Traveling and want to learn a bit of the language? Then these survival phrases will help you with the first 24 hours. Second, the ultimate listening video master course. How good are your listening skills? Watch this free video master course to more easily understand native speakers. You can download it right now. Third, the 50 most common verbs all beginners must know. Do you know all of these verbs? If not, this lesson will drill the 50 most common verbs into your head. Just use the free audio slideshow tool inside. And fourth, 20 strategies for learning a language at home. Want to learn a language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson gives you all the best tactics for learning languages. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Four rules for staying motivated with language learning. Want to know how to really stay motivated? Then listen closely to these four rules. These rules might be a little different from the advice that you often hear. Ready? Rule number one, action comes first. Are you the type of person who prefers to make things happen? Or are you the type that waits for things to happen to you? One of the best ways to stay motivated with language learning is to not think about motivation. Instead, take action and start learning. The mistake that most people make is that they have this backwards. They think they should wait to feel motivated first and then start learning. But really, it's the other way around. First, you do a language lesson. You learn a basic conversation. Then you do another. And then you start feeling like you can do more and learn more. You see results. So results bring motivation. Thinking about motivation does not bring motivation. Thinking about motivation is like reading an article about how to go outside for a run instead of actually going outside for a run. So action comes first. Rule number two, always have an outside influence. It's very easy to lose motivation if you're learning language alone. So what do you do? Here are some examples. You get a study buddy. You hire a tutor. You join a meetup group. You plan a trip to a country where people speak that language or you sign up for a proficiency test, like many language learners do. Why do this? Because now you have other people depending on you. You have outside factors that keep you going with the language. For example, if you signed up for a language proficiency test, you know you have a few months to study and you have to take the test on a certain date. Someone is going to pass or fail you. This is a lot more motivating than learning alone. If you're learning with our program, you can get your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll hold you accountable, send you homework, and give you feedback. If you have a study buddy, well, now you have someone that expects you to show up and improve. And if they're better than you, that should give you extra motivation because you want to be at their level. So get some outside influence. The next rule is rule number three. Always have a go-to study method. When you arrive at work or the gym or when you start your homework, you always have that one thing you do first, right? What do you do? For example, with work, maybe the very first thing you do is check emails. Then you check your tasks for the week. After that, you get started. Well, you need to make the same kind of habits with language learning. You need a go-to study method that you're comfortable with, an easy starting point. And this totally depends on you and your style. Choose something you enjoy. Some people listen to audio lessons. Some people like flashcards. For some people, writing is easy. You can write out song lyrics and translate them. It's up to you. The point is you should give yourself an easy first step to get you started and get into the flow of learning. If you're learning with our program, you can start with the word of the day email or do a quick three minute audio lesson. 
you can copy out the lesson dialogue, read through the lesson notes, or even easier, just review and re-listen to a lesson you took the day before. If you have your own go-to study method, you're already miles ahead of most learners. Leave a comment and tell us about it. And finally, rule number four, always be working on something. So here, I want you to stop and think about your friends. Do you have a friend that's always up to something? Some project? They're working on a song or they're making videos. They finish one thing and they start another. Well, if you wonder how they stay motivated, it's because they're always working on something. And this goes back to taking action. If you're not learning or working, you can't stay motivated. So you need to apply this to language learning. How? For example, like I mentioned in part two about outside influence, you can make a plan to travel to a country that speaks your target language, or you can sign up for a language proficiency test. If you do that, you'll have something to look forward to, something to do. If you're traveling, you need to learn travel phrases. If you have a proficiency test coming up, you have to study grammar and do exercises. What else can you do? If you already have a textbook or workbook, make it a goal to finish that book. If you have a learning program, make it a goal to finish it or reach a certain level. If you're using our lessons, make it a goal to finish one learning pathway. Then when you're done, give yourself something else to do, something to stick with, something to look forward to. So let's recap. One, action comes first. Two, always have an outside influence. Three, always have a go-to study method. And four, always be working on something. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.